Now, here's a quick story that proves, once again, that the narrative that a woman can make more money than a man, have a high-powered job, whatever you want, however you want to describe it, high-level position, make a lot of money, and her guy makes significantly less, that idea that that's okay and will work is complete BS. Because in reality, the gals always want a guy who, at the very least, they see is on their level of education, job title, um, income, etc., etc., but preferably... He makes more. That way she's always getting a prize. Title. 30-year-old male is dumped by 35-year-old female over salary and lifestyle differences. Listen to this. He says, I, a 30-year-old male, was broken up by my girlfriend, my now ex-girlfriend, over salary and life differences. My ex and I met and instantly had a great connection. We have several common interests and grew a love for each other very quickly. That's a problem. Went too fast. We bonded over past relationships and how they weren't great for either of us and how comfortable we felt with each other. She is a successful real estate agent in a busy northeast city. I'm a special education coordinator in the same city. Okay, I'm in the northeast. I'm north of Boston. Boston, very expensive real estate place to live. So realtors make darn good commissions, as you can imagine. Meanwhile, he works in special, special education. He works for the government. So there's a night and day difference in terms of salaries and all that. But hey, they have a great relationship. Shouldn't they be able to be together? Because I guarantee you, if, if the situation was reversed and he was the real estate agent making a lot of money and she worked for the schools, for the government essentially, and didn't make a whole lot of money, that'd be perfectly acceptable. But if it's a guy who's making less, obviously that's a problem. But the narrative says that w- wouldn't happen. We dated for four months without a single hiccup in our relationship until I was told that the school I'm working at will be closing at the end of the year. I decided to take this unique opportunity to spin it into a positive and go back to school and get a second master's in social work to transition my career to mental health counseling and hopefully private practice. Okay, the man with the plan. Going into private practice, therefore making more money than working for the government. Uh, This was something we both discussed and talked about at great lengths together. It wasn't until this this did she start to hint at the differences of our salaries being a concern of hers. Ah, imagine that. And by the way, she's 35 years old, okay? Her prime is long gone. Even if she's darn good looking for her age, she's still 35 years old. And she's going to pass up a guy who she gets along great with at 35 years old with a biological clock is no doubt ringing like a freaking gong. And, uh... Having doubts about things, it boils down to bucks. She'd rather be alone and think, I can get a better guy. Well, honey, the clock's ticking. The guys you want aren't going to be interested in you. They're going to be going out with gals in their 20s. <clears throat> I should note that other aspects of our future we shared similar views on, such as marriage and kids living together. Okay, they had a lot of common goals, but it doesn't matter. When we broke up, she said she didn't think she could look past her needing to be with a main earner in a relationship or someone that she can share in the lifestyle she has created for herself, like taking trips on a whim, overall not worrying about expenses. Well, it doesn't sound like this guy is worrying about expenses. This is still fresh for me and just looking for honest and unfiltered thoughts to help me in the process and move on. Now a little update, he says here, I didn't think this would get so much traction as it did, but wanted to answer some things that have come up and hopefully add some clarity to some of the incorrect assumptions and statements that were made. It says, number one, There was never a time where she would have been financially helping me with a degree, nor would I be going into significant debt to do so. Okay, he's not asking for her help. We've been living separate arrangements, and I already have set up a part-time work that would be done in conjunction with the program to continue supporting myself through this process. Okay, he's not going to go into a whole lot of debt to get this uh, degree. He's going to be working part-time, not relying on her or anybody else or going into debt, so he's fine. Two, the degree would only take 16 months to complete with then clinical hours to follow. It is also something that I will not be paying for. I received funding and tuition assistance, so I'm not accruing any debt. Okay, again, not going into debt. And three, I'm using the degree to go into a career as a school counselor and ultimately private practice, young adult therapist for struggling students. All right, so this is a guy who's trying to go somewhere, but the bottom line is this. After the, the, the honeymoon phase of four months and they have common goals and interests and marriage and kids and they get along great, then she realizes, oh crap, this guy is, is not making the kind of money that I feel that my guy should. She's probably getting some shit from her uh, friends and coworkers, I bet you, about that. And all of a sudden, never mind, never mind. This goes to show the narrative is bullshit. 
yes, in theory, a gal can make more money, guy makes less, and she'll love him so much because it doesn't matter because, hey, it works the other way around, right? Bullshit. And am I, am I, am I saying that all gals will be like this? No. That, that'd be unfair to say that, but a hell of a lot are. They want their guy, at the very least, to be what they consider to be on their level. The problem is, the list of demands nowadays are so long, to be on her level is darn near impossible. And therefore, these gals wait and wait and wait. And the next thing you know, they are late 30s, early 40s, still no ring, still no husband, still no kids. And then all of a sudden, they're bawling their eyes out saying, where are all the good men? Where are they all, all gone? Well, you met a lot of them and you br- broke up with them. I didn't give them a chance. And now they're crying and crying and wanting pity and all that. And I know some women like this. And as a result, then they're using medical science to do the in vitro thing. And they're having a kid on their own. And on, on you go. So this idea, guys, that uh, the narrative pushing this idea she can make more, bullshit. Here's a perfect example there. I hope this guy goes on and does his thing and goes into private practice. He may not make as much as she's making. But uh, let me tell you. I'll do all right, and when she's older, she'll be coming back probably wanting a second chance. And by the way, whenever the real estate market takes a hit, she's not bringing in that kind of money anymore, and so all of a sudden that type of guy will be a lot more appealing. But anyhow, there's a perfect example.